Hey guys, it's Britt and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm making whole food plant-based rodeo burgers. This is such an easy recipe. I'm gonna share with you how to make onion rings. Aren't they amazing? This is seriously one of our favorite recipes because I love that it's crunchy. If you love onion rings, definitely give this one a try. It's great as a side. You can put it on your burger, next to it, whatever you'd like, but these are our favorites. So it's really easy to make. We'll get into that in a minute. All of the measurements and everything is in our description box and on our website. And we're also gonna make patties. These patties are really, really easy. This literally works with any kind of bean. I promise you, whatever bean you have in your pantry, it'll work. So I use black beans, but you can use whatever canned beans or cooked beans that you have at home. And again, all of the ingredients and measurements are down in the description box below. It's also going to be on the screen in just a minute. Um, but a rodeo burger generally is a patty with an onion ring, and then sometimes it has barbecue sauce on it. So that's what I did today. My husband was a huge Burger King rodeo burger person. Uh, that was his, pretty much the only fast food he really liked. And so I kind of recreated it, whole food plant-based, easy, simple, and it's delicious. So I generally use the Ezekiel uh, hamburger buns, but we're out and I'm not gonna go hunting for them. Um, so I just made our dinner rolls and they work also as a great bun recipe. So I have a whole bunch of them made I kind of made them more slider size, but you can make them a little bit larger if you want. And I'll have this recipe linked up above, or you can just search Drudy dinner rolls, and that's what I used. So I made those this morning, super easy. You can just cut them, they work as a great bun. And then I layered mine with um, some greens, our burger patty, and then an onion ring, and then I have our barbecue sauce here I'm gonna put on top. This is such a good and easy, simple meal. Literally, the onion rings taste amazing, and that I would have a whole bunch as a side, and they never last. I never have leftovers in our house. They always go. You can use whatever kind of onion you have at home. I generally use red onions, but that's mainly because that's the only onions I buy. Um, you can use yellow or white, whatever you have. It's so easy, and I'm gonna to talk to you about how you can custom the spices. Literally, this is just like a basic burger recipe and a basic onion recipe, onion ring recipe, and you can make it so many different ways. You can make it spicy, you can make it curry flavored or Thai flavored, or like we did, just a nice gentle seasonings. You can do so many different things. Literally put in this what you like, and it's gonna be a winner for the whole family. So we're gonna jump into this. Make sure you're subscribed. I make whole food plant-based recipes twice a week and we're gonna get into all this, but it's such an easy and simple recipe. The burger patties do not crumble, which is amazing. Lots of plant-based burger recipes will crumble and fall apart. These guys hold their shape, which we love. And yeah, everything in here is literally one of our favorite foods. So I'm really excited to share this with you. We're gonna jump into this. All right, starting with our onion rings. You need one large onion. You can use a red onion or a white onion or a yellow onion. Um, I have our seasonings here. It's one tablespoon of paprika, one tablespoon of garlic powder, and one tablespoon of nutritional yeast. I have one cup of breadcrumbs. You can make them gluten-free or whole wheat. I also have one cup of oat flour. You can use any flour for this recipe though, but we really like using oat flour. And then I have one and a half cups of a unsweetened non-dairy milk. Just make sure it's unsweetened. Do not use vanilla in this. <laughs> and your onion, and this is really such a simple recipe. You guys are gonna make onion rings all the time after you watch this. So you just wanna cut your onion rings out and it's really easy. So you're making a slice and then you're gently popping out each onion ring. A little bit of patience goes a long way for this. Literally, it's just taking your time. Even if it rips and isn't a complete onion ring, you can still do the same recipe, and they're even good parts of it if, it if it breaks. It's totally fine. I got really lucky on this onion, and none of them broke, which is kind of a miracle. But you'll see that it made a ton of onion rings. I love this recipe. It's so simple. 
And again, if you want to switch out the seasonings, totally customized to what you like. We sometimes make spicier onion rings. Sometimes I make more of like of a Thai inspired onion ring or you can even do so many different flavor combinations. So that seasoning uh, packet I have that I'm gonna share with you, how I mix it is really whatever you wanna use. So you, into your flour goes your non-dairy milk. Again, any flour will work with this recipe. I just really like using oat flour. You wanna whisk so there's no clumps. Take your time, really get it whisked uh, well. Don't, don't rush on that part, it's worth it. All right, set that aside. Grab your breadcrumbs. I'm using whole wheat breadcrumbs here. And we're gonna add our seasonings into our breadcrumbs. So go ahead and dump that in and then give it a nice stir. Super easy again. You can use whatever seasonings that you have at home that you like. You can even not use any seasonings and just breadcrumbs. It, it, it works with so many different variations. We have done lots of different seasonings for this, but this is generally our staple ones that we always go to. All right, you're all ready. So now you wanna set up like a dredging station. One onion ring goes into the liquid first. Make sure the batter covers your onion ring well. Let the excess drip off and then put it into your breadcrumbs. It's that simple. Coat your onion ring with the breadcrumbs and set it on some parchment paper. I really like using parchment paper for this. You wanna make sure you either use a silicone pad or a parchment paper because they, you want everything to crisp up and not to stick. So that's, that's a perfect onion ring. All right, and then you just repeat with all of the rest of your onion rings. It's very, very simple. And you can do so many different uh, ideas. Like if you also wanted to bread some artichoke hearts or hearts of palm or something like that, also works fantastic in this recipe. <laughs> we use that dredging kind of combination for a lot of different things we bread. But I love, love a good onion ring and it'll get nice and crispy. So once you have these all ready to go, you want to preheat your oven to 400 degrees I bake these for 20 minutes. You can also air fry them if you'd like, but generally we just bake them 20 minutes, 400 degrees, really easy to remember. And they come out perfectly crispy and delicious. I did make sure I even uh, coated the really tiny pieces because those are the pieces that you can eat while you're waiting for everything else to come, come along. The hardest part of this recipe is not eating your onion rings before you finish your burger. It, it's really tempting. So those little tiny pieces, I go ahead and, and snack on those while I'm waiting. And you'll, you'll thank me because you'll do the same. All right, for the burger recipe, this really is a kind of whatever you have bean burger. I love this recipe because it's so simple. It's one cup of rolled oats. Super simple to have. I have two flax eggs, which is one tablespoon of ground flax meal to three cups of water. So I double that to make two. You'll see it's really nice and thick. This is our binder for our recipe. It'll make it so it doesn't fall apart. One tablespoon of white miso. If you don't have white miso, you can just leave that out. It gives a nice saltiness without the sodium damaging effects. I also have one fourth cup of nutritional yeast. I have one tablespoon of onion powder, one tablespoon of garlic powder, and one tablespoon of smoked paprika. That's our seasonings. You can switch that out to be whatever seasonings that you like. I also drained and rinsed one can of black beans. This works with any beans that you have. If you have chickpeas, you have kidney beans, pinto beans, a white bean, you can still make a burger, which is what I love. Literally, it's whatever bean I grab first is what we use. Some optional ideas are you can put some beets in this. You can also put mushrooms. Those are two things that sometimes we do. It just kind of depends, but I just want to show you the bare bone recipe. Uh, so you're gonna pulse it. I would say that I scraped the sides around three times. I didn't add any extra liquid to this. Really the flax egg is the only liquid that I needed and it really does hold together. So just scrape the sides, be patient with it. You can see that there are still some beans and oats intact and that's fine. I just want the majority of it to be kind of mushed together. Um, so that's perfect. Usually on the third time I, I move it to a bowl. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna refrigerate this for around 20 to 30 minutes. This is gonna make it so much easier for you to handle when you're making your patties. It makes all the difference. Throw it in a bowl, 
put it in your fridge for 20 to 30 minutes and it will make life so much better. <laughs> so that's what I did. I moved it to a bowl, scraped everything out. It is, some, some pieces are still intact, some pieces are, are mushed together. That's what I look for, it's perfect. And you know, it doesn't take that long to, to mix up. So that's really the consistency I wanted to show you right here. Um, and it's ready to go. So this one into our refrigerator, so easy. Uh, I just put it in there, forgot about it for a little bit, pulled it back out, and we're ready to go. It's it's super simple, and I like that you can still see the beans in it. You could blend it till there's nothing showing where it's all mushed together, that's fine too, um, but it's optional. So line a baking sheet with parchment paper. Get a little bowl of water. This also is gonna make life a lot easier. Get your chilled bean patty mixture, and you're gonna wet the palms of your hands just with a little bit of water. This will help with it sticking to your skin. It makes such a difference. So wet your palms just a little bit, not anything crazy, and then you wanna form your patties. You can make them as large or as small as you'd like. I kinda went medium size here today. Um, I got seven patties out of this recipe. Remember, there's only one can of beans in here, so you can always double this recipe if you're making a bunch. It freezes great. You can freeze it, which is wonderful. And like the main ingredients are just oats and beans, so I'm, I'm all for it. So go ahead and form your patties. You can make them look all beautiful. I like to roughly form them and then kind of press them out just a little bit when they're on our baking dish. You'll see right there. But again, I got seven patties. So easy. You can preheat your oven to 350 degrees, and these only take between 20 and 25 minutes to bake. Okay, so at 20 minutes, peak on them. Um, generally, everything is already cooked, which is fantastic. We're using cooked beans, so it's just nice to brown everything together, warm everything, um, but like you're not gonna get food, food poisoning from this because again, everything's everything's cooked um, and what I love about this recipe is they hold up a lot of times when you make a plant-based burger they crumble and fall apart but because we put two flax eggs in our in our mixture it really does hold its shape and does not become crumbly which is what I'm looking for a nice bean burger that's what I want I want one that's gonna hold up so don't worry as long as you you wanna make sure it's cooked all the way so it doesn't fall apart, but you'll see here that they really hold their shape. And this was only after around 20 minutes. So they got nice and brown, crispy, and they hold up. I can kind of toss them around, nothing's falling apart, which is fantastic. And these are great just like as a burger, you can crumble them and put them on a salad or put them on, um, like in some whole wheat pasta is really fantastic and like a bolognese so you can do so many things they freeze great so I have some oat dinner rolls that I made into uh, a burger slider and I just put some greens on there put one patty put our onion ring on top and then not shown but I put some barbecue sauce before I ate it as well and there you go it has a beautiful little slider and I really hope you guys enjoyed this. It's such an easy two recipes for this video. I literally couldn't wait to jump in. I've already eaten like half of my slider, but it is such a great combination. I love having some barbecue sauce with it with the crunch of the onion ring, the flavor from the patty. I love that this was easy to make. Who doesn't love that? Oh my gosh, I could eat a million of these. So I hope you guys will make this. Tag us if you make our recipes. The onion rings are an amazing side, or you can put it on your burger. The patties are so great that you can change it up with literally whatever bean you have. And so you guys probably have a lot of these ingredients already at home, which is wonderful. I hope you guys like this. Give this video a thumbs up. Leave us a comment down below. Make sure you're subscribed, because again, I make whole food plant-based recipes twice a week that are delicious, and the whole family will love them. I'll see you guys very soon. I'm gonna go eat a slider. Bye-bye.